this, the liquid oxygen that we load on board Falcon 9 is uh, super chilled to help densify um, the, that liquid oxygen. When I say super chilled, I mean really, really cold. Uh, we're talking <laughs> like negative 336 degrees. So, um, of course, whenever it comes into ambient air, um, it will turn into its gaseous state. Which Ox load has started. Okay, and there we just heard the call out that second stage LOX load has just begun. And so the mission teams um, that we've seen in control rooms from Kennedy Space Center to Houston to Hawthorne are all uh, laser focused on keeping this crew safe uh, from this point and all the way to the space station and back home in six months. We had a chance to ask about their mindset right now from a couple of their leaders. There's a very delicate dance between the weather, <laughs> normally the weather and the operations and, you know, making sure all these complex systems are working correctly together. And what it's really important is just how calmly, quietly, efficiently the team's working through every single one of those things. It's why we train. People are very passionate about this program, as am I, and uh, they know the consequences of what they're doing. They know that the crew's lives depend on what they're doing. This human spaceflight endeavor requires diligence every day on the job, and I think our team knows that. I definitely feel like those crew members are in our hands, and we need to be there thinking straight, making sure we're making the right decisions so that we're getting that crew safely to the International Space Station. And th that was... Um Kathy Leaders and Steve Stitch, um, who have been in charge of the NASA team uh, for much of the life of the commercial crew program and have worked very closely um, with the folks on the SpaceX side who have gotten to know these astronauts uh, on a personal level and um, have taken such care in all of the checkouts and the, uh, the paranoia reviews, as they're called, to make sure that they're constantly looking for problems to uncover um, to make sure that um, every, every leaf, every stone is unturned to make this, safest, uh, this flight as safe as possible for the crew. Again, it is now T minus 14 minutes, 15 seconds and counting. Uh, liftoff will be about one hour before sunrise here on Florida Space Coast. And if we're lucky, we may see a beautiful contrail at first light. At the time of launch at 549 and two seconds Eastern time, the space station will be flying 258 miles over the Indian Ocean south of Sri Lanka. And now with T minus 13 minutes, 50 seconds and counting, we want to focus on the pad as we proceed through the final stretch of the countdown. We will turn it over to Hawthorne to take us through launch at 549 this morning. John. We're inside T minus 14 minutes. Everything is still looking good for launch of Falcon 9 and Dragon, 49 minutes and two seconds after the hour. Falcon 9 began propellant load at T minus 35 minutes. Loading of the RP-1 fuel onto stage two is complete. Fuel loading is continuing on the first stage. We're over half full and it'll finish at T minus six minutes. The densified liquid oxygen loading is continuing on the first stage and we began loading liquid oxygen onto the second stage a few minutes ago. The liquid oxygen loading will wrap up T minus three minutes on the first stage, about T minus two minutes on the second stage. Checkouts of the thrust vector controllers, what we call TVC wiggles, are coming up along with throttle valve checkouts on the engines. That's where we move the engines a little bit, make sure the hydraulics are ready to go. Currently the range is go, ready to support, working no issues. And we continue to have good weather, both at the launch pad, at ground level, at the upper altitude winds, and downrange at the contingency landing sites. On the Dragon spacecraft, the Dragon mission director and team, they're reporting no issues. Their communication checkouts are complete. The crew access arm is retracted, as you see on your monitors, away from the vehicle. The launch escape system is armed. The crew is strapped in and ready to go. Final instructions of the crew will be coming at T minus 10 minutes. They'll just configure their displays for launch. That'll give them insight into how the launch is pr proceeding and it provides constant updates on vehicle health. And for Dragon at T minus five minutes, we'll hear it enter terminal count as they transition to internal power. 
Now we're going to hear continued callouts on the countdown net as we get close to T minus zero and to the liftoff. Now, Gary, we talked about the ascent sequence of events that are coming up here. You and Jesse went through that a little while ago, but we're also going to have abort modes. Can you explain a little bit about what the abort mode callouts are that we might hear? That's right, John. Uh, we're continuing to track that the Falcon 9 and Dragon are looking good for launch, but just in case anything were to happen, Dragon is fully prepared uh, to initiate an abort and use those Super Draco engines to escape from a speeding Falcon 9. On the way uphill, you'll hear a series of letter and number combinations. Uh, those will denote the stage that the rocket is on and the abort zone uh, that we're on as well. On the first stage, you'll hear abort zones A and B. Uh, that will cover the Falcon 9's ascent up to about the northern border of uh, North Carolina, about seven and a half to eight miles uh, in altitude. And the stage two will have stage two A through E. Mostly it will be stage A, or stage 2A uh, abort zone, but towards the end of the six minutes that stage two will be firing, you'll hear the numbers start going out from B to E, uh, with E being an abort to orbit. Uh, all of these capabilities enabled on the Dragon spacecraft to make sure that the crew uh, will be delivered safely into orbit. Inside 10 minutes and 30 seconds, we should be hearing uh, some final status, maybe a good luck and uh, godspeed from some of the ground teams here, uh, ensuring that the crew is ready to go, that Falcon 9, Dragon, and all the support teams are ready for launch. Dragon, SpaceX, confirm crew displays are configured for launch. Displays are configured for launch. SpaceX copies. Shane, Megan, Aki, Tama, we're thrilled to have crew on board Endeavor once again and truly honored to have you, you all at the helm. It's been a pleasure training alongside you ahead of this historic launch. We wish you a great mission, good luck, and enjoy the ride. Thank you, Chad, Christian, Frank, and all the teams who got our crew and vehicle ready for this mission. We want to say a special thank you to our families and friends. We're incredibly grateful for your support and sacrifice during our training and our upcoming flight. Our crew is flying astronauts from NASA, ESA, and JAXA, which hasn't happened in over 20 years. We're excited to represent our nations, agencies, and all of humanity. Off the Earth, for the Earth, Endeavor is ready to go. All right, some celebratory handshakes from inside the Crew Dragon. That was the voice of the core, uh, Chad Healy, here in uh, Mission Control Hawthorne. Uh, next series of events, John, will be the engine chill. Everything's looking good so far. Yeah, it is. Uh, we're actually watching uh, the uh, fuel trim valves on the Merlin 1D engines going through some checkouts right now. And as you said, at T-minus seven minutes, we're going to start uh, a sequence of events that begins with opening the pre-valves. Currently, the liquid oxygen, the kerosene fuel on the Falcon 9 first, second stages is separated from the Merlin engines. T-minus seven minutes, just over a minute from now, we open the pre-valves that allows propellant down to the top of the engine or the uh, inlet to the turbo pumps. At the same time, we open up bleed valves on the turbo pumps and that allows a little bit of that densified ultra cold liquid oxygen to flow through the pump and to chill down the liquid oxygen pump. That way, when we get to T minus two seconds and we spin the pumps up and everything comes to full power, we're not pulling very cold liquid oxygen through a warm pump. So as that cools it down right now, that'll get it ready for that ignition sequence in the last couple of seconds. So we should hear that call out that the stage one engine chill has started. You'll also hear in flight, uh, about a minute and a half, two minutes into flight, MVAC chill has begun. Uh, that's also a repeat sequence there where we open uh, the bleed valve and begin chilling that engine one more time before it lights after stage separation. Right now we're waiting to see the pre-valves come open and the chill begin. Stage one engine chill has started. 
Yep, and there's the call out. We've got indication pre-valves coming open on the engines. And we have begun to chill in the Merlin engines for flight. That's right, John. Now inside six minutes, 40 seconds. RP-1 rocket grade kerosene is completely filled in the second stage. We're anticipating about 30 more seconds for the first stage to be completely filled with that RP-1 refined kerosene. The liquid oxygen will continue to flow through the first and second stages up to the final minutes before T0. RP load is complete. All right, confirmation. We have 100% fill of RP1 on both the first and second stages. Six minutes to go until an instantaneous launch window today. The next milestone will be tra uh, Dragon to transition to configure for terminal count. And this time, uh, terminal count, the Dragon will be on internal power, no longer relying on the lines from the ground. And from there, the Falcon 9 propellant tanks will pressurize for strong back retract. That'll be another visual milestone. The clamps just uh, below the Dragon's unpressurized trunk will open, and the strong back will tilt back just two degrees. Then right after liftoff, back to 45 degrees. Again, RP-1 kerosene, both on the first and second stages. Liquid oxygen continues to flow through on the first and second stages. That very densified, very cold liquid oxygen. Dragon has transitioned to configure for terminal count. Falcon 9 propellant tanks are pressurizing for strong back retract. All right, John, good calls and right on time. Dragon is now on internal power. Okay, next major event coming up is going to be opening the clamp arms around the second stage in preparation for retracting the strong back away from the vehicle to get ready for liftoff. Strong back is retracting. We heard the call out. Strong back is beginning to retract. We're into the automated sequence. We should see the clamp arms that are just visible there uh, around the top of the second stage begin to open up. Once they are open, then the strong back will begin to move away from the Falcon 9. Watching the sequence, a nice view from up on top of the fixed service structure. The arms are opening. And we're beginning to recline away from the Falcon 9. We'll move the strong back two degrees away from the Falcon 9. That'll get it ready for liftoff. And at T0, when we the flight computer commands liftoff, the hydraulics on the strong back will pull it to a position 45 degrees away from the Falcon 9 giving it the clearance for launch. So right now, the strong back is moving away. Everything proceeding nominally. It's great to, to yeah. hear, uh, John. We're also anxiously awaiting the liquid oxygen complete on the first stage. Should hear that call very shortly. Dragon has transitioned to terminal count and is on internal power. Stage one locks load is complete. Okay, we've heard the call out. Stage one locks load is complete. We're loading liquid oxygen on the second stage for about another 30 seconds or so. Once we get the liquid oxygen load complete on the second stage, the propellant line that runs up the side of the strong back that carries liquid oxygen will vent that line down to make sure there's no liquid in it when we get to liftoff. When we do that, we open up valves on the strong back. And as uh, Kate and Marie were talking earlier, when we vent off that very cold, gaseous oxygen, it'll merge with the warm, humid Florida air, and you'll get a large white plume of condensation off of the back of the strong back. That'll be normal coming about a minute and a half before launch. 
Everything continuing to Page look good. Page two locks load is complete. Dragon is in auto idle. All right, with that, the Falcon 9 is fully fueled. We have fuel on both the first and second stages, and both stages are filled with liquid oxygen. Gas closeout has started. Expect loud venting. Dragon is also in auto idle. The flight computer is on Dragon. Maintaining their calculations, standing by, waiting for the T-0 mark. One minute, 15 seconds until launch. The one minute mark Dragon will transition to countdown and the flight termination system will arm. The computers on Falcon 9 will be talking to the computers on Dragon and can issue an abort if necessary. FTS is armed. Falcon 9 is in startup and is now controlling. Dragon is in countdown. All right, 50 seconds to go. Everything is ready for an on-time launch today. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. Copy, go for launch. Ground teams are ready and the crew inside Dragon is ready. 30 seconds to go hey, until 30 launch. Seconds. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Mission and liftoff. Got speed Endeavor and crew 2. Copy, 1 Alpha. Endeavor launches once again. Four astronauts from three countries on Crew 2 now making their way to the one and only International Space Station. The vehicle is pitching downrange. Nine Merlin engines on the first stage providing 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Hearing good calls on the first stage performance so far. seconds into the second rotational crew mission on board Dragon and Falcon 9. Falcon 9 will be throttling down the nine Merlin engines shortly here in preparation for in preparation for maximum dynamic pressure. And there's that call out for the throttle down. Maximum dynamic pressure, max Q, is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees throughout ascent. So throttling down does help us pass. Supersonic. Throttling down helps us pass through this period, which should be coming here shortly. Max Q. There's our call out that we have just passed through max Q. Stage one, throttle up. And one we can Bravo. Now... Copy, one Bravo. All right, one Bravo is the second abort mode on the first stage. The first stage continues to fire for two minutes, 35 seconds. One and a half minutes into today's flight. Falcon 9 now traveling at more than 1,500 miles an hour. MVAC engine chill has started. All right, the engine chill for the second stage single Merlin engine has started. About 30 more seconds of the first stage firing to bring our four astronauts into orbit. Now from here coming up in about 20 some seconds, we're going to have three major milestones. We'll have shutdown of the nine Merlin engines. We're beginning to throttle them down. We will then get stage, stage separation, one, throttle down. and then we will get ignition of the second stage engine to propel Dragon and the Falcon 9 second stage into orbit. Two hey, Alpha. Nico. Copy, two Alpha. Acquisition confirmed. Acquisition signal right. And we have ignition of the second stage. You see the green flash of that T-TEB fluid. 
the ex extent expansion nozzle on the second stage Merlin vacuum glowing that bright red that we like to see. Good performance on the second stage so far. And on the left side of your screen, we saw the uh, exhaust of the second stage engine streaming past the first stage as the grid fins are coming out. We also briefly had a view of the lights of Central Florida in the background. Currently, the first stage is continuing to coast up to Apogee. It's unpowered. It'll reach a peak height and then begin to descend back down toward the Earth's atmosphere, where it will light three engines to slow down in preparation for what will be a landing burn on the drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. You can see the grid fins are deployed. Right now, the first stage Dragon pulsing. SpaceX, trajectory nominal. We're pulsing the thrusters. Signal of Bermuda. Copy, nominal trajectory. And we hear a call out from the crew, nominal trajectory. So we're beginning to move the first stage into position so it can do the entry burn. Four minutes, 15 seconds into today's flight. Second stage propelling our four astronauts up the eastern seaboard will continue to fire. It's a six minute burn to deliver the astronauts into orbit. We'll wait for a cue for good orbital insertion after that. Meanwhile, we will be hearing uh, check ins on the vehicle's trajectory and performance, as well as check ins with some of the ground stations as it passes over uh, throughout uh, the six minutes of the second stage firing. Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. Copy nominal trajectory. Getting good views of both the first and second stage from the onboard cameras. Acquisition of signal bus. The New Hampshire tracking station has acquired the second stage telemetry signal. Meanwhile, the first stage has reached apogee and it's now beginning to descend from uh, a height. It's currently about 167 kilometers up. And in a few minutes, we will get the entry burn of the second stage, of the first stage. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Copy, nominal trajectory. Right on cue, those check-ins on the second stage performance. Once a minute, everything's looking good on that second stage. Propulsion is nominal. Stage two continues to climb. The vehicle now exceeding 8,000 miles an hour at an altitude of about 124 miles. And just about one minute from now, we will begin the entry burn of the first stage. That will consist of lighting the center engine, and then shortly afterwards, two more engines for a three-engine burn to slow down the first stage in preparation for entering the Earth's atmosphere. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Copy, nominal trajectory. Another check-in, the crew confirming they're hearing the same thing. The vehicle exceeding, are about to exceed about 10,000 miles per hour. Meanwhile, first stage down at 90 kilometers, getting ready to relight three engines for the entry burn. Stage two FTS has saved. We've got the center engine ignition and there come the two side engines. Now this entry burn will last about 29 seconds. It's gonna significantly slow down the vehicle in preparation for hitting the denser part of the Earth's atmosphere.
Entry burn complete. We're down below 35 kilometers, continuing to look good on the first stage, heading to the Atlantic Ocean for a landing on the drone ship. Meanwhile, second stage is less than a minute away from cutoff. Stage two in terminal guidance. Shannon. Copy, Shannon. Shannon called out at the back end of stage two, a few seconds until cutoff. MVAC shut down. Dragon SpaceX launch escape system disarmed. Launch escape system disarmed. Copy. Dragon SpaceX nominal orbit insertion. Copy nominal orbital insertion. All right, the Falcon 9 second stage has done its job delivering our four crew into orbit. We hear the applause here in Hawthorne. We're waiting to get a video signal back from the drone ship. Of course, I still love you. And the view from the onboard camera we saw it just briefly. It looks like first stage on the drone ship. Getting views of the Dragon trunk. So the first stage is on the drone ship, successfully landed. And more importantly, second stage is in a nominal orbit with the Dragon spacecraft getting ready for some important events coming up, Gary. That's right. About two more minutes, the Dragon and the second stage of the Falcon 9 will be in a coast phase. It'll take that long until the spacecraft separates from the Falcon 9. Of course, both uh, now in a nominal orbit. Great to see some of the views of the Earth as it passes by over the North Atlantic Ocean. All right, we're getting shots of the crew in orbit. I'm looking uh, for that zero G indicator. Can't seem to see it in this shot, but we have a minute to go until we have uh, spacecraft separation. Dragon traveling at nearly 17,000 miles per hour at an altitude of 124 miles. Again, the four-person crew of Endeavour is in orbit right now. Less than 30 seconds until we have spacecraft separation. Ten seconds to spacecraft separation. We should hear words from the core here in uh, Mission Control Hawthorne once we have successful separation. Thanks for flying our first flight proven crewed Falcon 9. See you side, crew two. Thank you very much. We're great. It's glad to be back in space for all of us, and we'll uh, send our regards to crew one when we get there. Thanks. Absolutely stunning views 
from both inside the cabin, seeing the excitement of our four-person crew inside Endeavour, and watching Endeavour drift away from the camera on the second stage as the Earth passes by on an orbital sunrise. SpaceX Endeavour, we... There's... And Endeavour, you uh, cut out a little bit there. If the question was, uh, if you're go to open visors, you are go to open visors at this time. Copy and work, thanks. All right, 13 and a half minutes past liftoff. The crew is in orbit, traveling at nearly 17,000 miles an hour. Well, Gary, I don't know about you, but uh, that was a great countdown. <laughs> Everything sounded great. Right on and time, Dragon's actually SpaceX. a little ahead of time. nominal dehumidifier activation and service section Draco checkouts. Got a good orbit out of Falcon 9 and first Copy stage landed on the drone ship. And we're in the sunlight over the Atlantic Ocean with the Dragon spacecraft. All in all, a great day. I think everybody's jealous of the crew in orbit right now, John. Uh, these views, even just from the cameras, are absolutely stunning. It was great to see our crew members uh, get into orbit. They already performed successful checkouts of the 12 service section Dracos around Dragon. The next uh, milestone will be the deployment of the nose cone. That'll be about a five minute process, but that'll expose the forward bulkhead Dracos and prepare them uh, for checkout. There's a phase burn. There's five major burns that are needed to get the Crew Dragon up to rendezvous with the International Space Station over the next 23 hours. And so that first phase burn is coming up real soon in about uh, 35 minutes, actually less than 35 minutes. Jesse, I don't know if you could see the zero G indicator, but I was told it's a penguin. I'm trying to look for it. I'm looking for it too. Keep an eye out on that left hand screen. Meanwhile, the uh, dragon is configured for, for a nose cone deployment. We'll stand by for uh, when that sequence starts. The nose cone itself opens uh, just beyond 90 degrees, about 105 degrees, to expose the forward uh, bulkhead Dracos. Those forward bulkhead Dracos, four of them at the very top of the Dragon, will do the bulk of the work when it comes to firing the Draco engines for minutes at a time to increase the uh, Dragon's speed, altitude, and phasing to catch up with the International Space Station again over the next 23 hours. Meanwhile, we're still getting camera views from the second stage, looking at that expansion nozzle. Did its work beautifully to deliver the four crew into orbit? Dragging over the North Atlantic Ocean. And Gary, this is John. I think I heard a call out on one of the Dragon nets that the uh, first set of nose cone hooks is open. So it sounds like that sequence is going well. Very good. Well, from here in Hawthorne, it was very exciting to see the uh, Falcon 9 lift off and deliver our four-person crew into orbit. We're going to be with you throughout the entire phase, uh, the rendezvous phase, uh, until Dragon and his four-person crew docks with the International Space Station. That'll be over the next 23 hours. We'll bring you through some of those major burns uh, that are happening. But I am so jealous of Marie and the group <laughs> over there over at the Kennedy Space Center. You actually got to see the launch and probably feel it as well. Marie. What was that like? Oh, it was just spectacular. The launch right behind us, and it lit up the sky, just absolutely breathtaking. It was so, um, it was so astounding to see the, the colors. I mean, it was uh, not just your, your usual fireball, but uh, there was um, the pulsating towards the end. And uh, Kate, you're much more eloquent uh, describing <laughs> that sequence, which I appreciate you doing that while we were happy to help. <laughs> staring. It was, um, 
it was so fun and knowing that um, those guys were enjoying the ride uh, along with uh, the sights that we got to see yeah. uh, made all the difference. Uh, there's nothing more relieving than um, crew in orbit. <laughs> yeah. And of course, uh, it, we were so lucky to have clear weather here, being able to see uh, the re-entry burn as well. I was hoping we were going to be able to catch landing burn, but uh, unfortunately, clouds on the horizon did block that view. But it was also uh, such a treat to be able to see the, the re-entry of that, uh, that first stage as well. <laughs> Let's go over to uh, Jasmine to get some reaction. Uh, I think she's with the NASA administrator now. Jasmine? Thanks. Thank you, Marie. Yes, I am joined again here with Steve Jerzyk. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> no, thank you. So we just had the privilege of watching that spectacular launch in person. What was that like? Uh, watching a launch, uh, particularly a human space launch, will never get old for me. It's just thrilling to see those nine engines light up and it lift off the pad, get to the main gen engine cutoff and separation and get that second stage started. And um, of course, pre-dawn launches are always amazing. And uh, you know, we could see um, the vehicle pretty much through the entire trajectory up to Earth orbit. It was just spectacular. Right, no, absolutely. It was just stunning and the sun is just now uh, starting to peek over the clouds here. Uh, so do you have any final words of encouragement for our NASA team, our SpaceX team and our international partners? Yeah, you know, um, partnerships are key to what we do, um, particularly in human spaceflight. Our partnership with SpaceX has been tremendous. Third launch in less than a year um, after almost a 10 year a gap in human spaceflight, launching astronauts from American soil on American rockets. Um, so our partnership with SpaceX and our commercial partners, other commercial partners is critical, and our international partners. Uh, we we could, could not do this without them. Uh, very international mission with two U.S. astronauts and one from ESA and one from JAXA. And uh, obviously the ISS is the largest engineering Collab international collaboration in, in the history of humankind, and it continues to amaze me um, how well we work together in doing all the research and technology on ISS. And uh, I'm just so grateful for the, the, the NASA SpaceX um, uh, team uh, for their hard work and uh, getting this third launch off, uh, the Crew 2 launch, and uh, looking forward to uh, docking and hatch opening and the welcome ceremony, and also looking forward to Crew 1 return uh, next Thursday on the 28th. Right, right. A lot of action still going on at the station right now. So as you mentioned, the next big milestone for Crew 2 will be docking at the station. So where are you going to be for that action? I'm actually going to stay here at Kennedy Space Center and follow the free flight uh, up to docking. And then I'm going to participate in the welcoming ceremony with um, with uh, my counterparts from ESA, the Director General of ESA and the President of JAXA and welcome the Crew 2 astronauts to the ISS. Fantastic, Kennedy is the place to be right now then I guess. Do you have any uh, final remarks that you want to share with us today? Hey, you know, I'm just, I'm, again, I'm just so proud of the team. Um, I'm so proud of what um, this team has been able to accomplish uh, over the past year, particularly. It's been uh, especially challenging, uh, global pandemic and other challenges and, uh, and just the focus of the team to get these three crew launches off as well as launch Perseverance, land Perseverance, uh, first powered flight, uh, a controlled powered flight of a vehicle on another planet, first time generating oxygen from the atmosphere of Mars, um, and, uh, and really looking forward to um, the core stage for SLS getting here and us moving forward to the first uh, uncrewed test flight, Artemis 1 of SLS and Orion. So uh, accomplished an incredible amount in this last year and much more to accomplish in the year to come. Absolutely, we've got a bright future right here at NASA. Thank you so much, uh, NASA Administrator Steve Jerzyk for joining us today. Now we're gonna take it back to the KSC host desk. Thanks, Jasmine. Shane, Megan, Toma, and Aki are on course to arrive at the International Space Station around 5.10 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. And we're going to stay on the air for continuous live coverage along their entire ride to station. Though our coverage here at Kennedy Space Center is concluding, we're going to turn it over to the teams in Hawthorne and Houston to take us through the next phases of the Crew 2 mission all the way through hatch opening and a welcome ceremony for the crew. And for those of you watching online, 
on YouTube, take a look at the description below the video. There you'll find the new link for the, new, for the Crew 2 Rendezvous and Coast Phase. Live coverage will continue at that new location shortly. And if you're watching on NASA TV, you won't miss a thing and coverage will continue. That's right, and as you follow along, we invite you to tune in to a post-launch news conference at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time right here on NASA TV, where NASA and SpaceX will take questions live. In addition to NASA TV, you can always follow along on Twitter at at NASA, at SpaceX, and NASA.gov for mission updates. Huge thanks to all of our guests for joining us today, and thank all of you for getting up early, early on the, on the East Coast uh, <laughs> and watching. Now here are highlights from the journey to orbit off the Earth for the Earth. We can see the astronauts are now working with SpaceX suit technicians and the closeout team. And that looks, yeah, that's our commander, Shane Kimbrough. There's uh, Megan MacArthur getting helped into her uh, gloves in her spacesuit. And mission specialist Thomas Pesquet will be making his second trip to space. But that's Aki Hoshide uh, having a laugh <laughs> with some of the uh, suit technicians. There's Shane Kimbrough, pilot Megan MacArthur in the front. Megan blowing kisses. <laughs> Toma and Aki ready for their ride to the space station. And here they come, the Crew 2 astronauts taking their first steps outside before their journey to space. this moment they're now going to have the opportunity to wave goodbye from a safe distance and it looks like Bob Benkin is there and with uh, the son of he and Megan MacArthur. ONC departure on schedule. Right so we just heard that announcement that the crew has departed the operations and checkout building on schedule. And we can see the astronauts inside the crew access arm. Commander Shane Kimbrough, here he is climbing inside Crew Dragon Endeavor. We call this process ingress. Uh, we see Reed Nelsey, suit technicians, uh, will help the, the crew members get buckled in. As you can see, the side hatch has just been closed. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Mission and lift off. Got Steve Endeavor alpha. and Crew Two. Copy one alpha. Endeavor launches once again. Four astronauts from three countries on Crew Two now making their way to the one and only International Space Station. The vehicle is pitching down range. Nine Merlin engines on the first stage providing 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Hearing good calls for first stage performance so far. 